Hi guys, uh, another video for you here. Um, today we're doing the section in your packet uh, 8.6. Um, it's entitled Writing Linear Equations. Uh, this is a few different things, uh, but it all goes back to the whole idea of using y equals mx plus b. Let me get where I need to be here. There we go. All right, so remember what we've been working with, y equals mx plus b. It's all about this equation. This is your slope. This is your y-intercept. And if you keep those in mind, um, this will help you throughout this whole lesson here. Uh, remember, this is whatever your y value is, and this is whatever your x value is at whatever coordinate you're dealing with. So yesterday, we started you with an equation, and we had us uh, we had you tell us the slope and the y-intercept. Well, this today, we're, we're just switching it around. We're going backwards. All right, example one uh, says write an equation of the line with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So they're giving you this, and they're giving you this. This is all you have to do. Plug them in. All right, so the y stays the same. Uh, the slope is now negative 2. The x stays the same. And oh, I've got a negative 3 as the y-intercept, so negative 3. And there is your equation. That's That's really all... There is to it. If they give you the slope and they give you the y-intercept, you just plug them into here. All right, and uh, that's it. You're done. If you want to graph it, you can. If you want to get a line that is perpendicular to it, we should know how to do that. Um, we'll do uh, some of those later. All right, so uh, using that, uh, go ahead and try checkpoint one. I'm going to turn checkpoint one answer on so you can check it again. I only put it in for a few seconds because you can pause this. So let's turn that off and. Here's the answer to checkpoint one. It's pretty much exactly the same as what example one is. All right. Uh, let's go on to example two. All right. If you uh, look at the bottom of your page there, a uh, couple things we want to do here. Again, I'm still trying to figure out how to do a straight line. So that's as straight as I'm going to get freehanding it. So um, they're going to give you the graph now, and we want to write the equation. Again, we need to figure out, I'll get used to this one of these days. Uh, bam. Okay, we need to we need to figure out the slope and the y-intercept. As soon as we get the slope, we plug it in there. As soon as we get the y-intercept, we plug it in there. All right. So very easy, two-step process. Okay. First of all, look at your graph. Right there, the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So that is your y-intercept. We don't have to do any math. We just look at the graph. Right there, uh, y-intercept is going to be a positive 2. I get that from right here, the y-coordinate. All right, so already I'm halfway done. I have positive 2. I plug it in for b. All right, now the only other thing I need to figure out is my slope. Well, we've done this. All right, we use our slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we go over here, and lo and behold, they have given me two points on the graph. Okay, so I'm going to call this, let me erase some things here so it doesn't get any messy. I'm going to take this. Oh, that's weird. Okay, and I'm going to take, uh, well, that's all I do. All right, so this is going to be my x1, x sub 1, and this is going to be y sub 1. All right. And this is going to be x sub 2, and this is y sub 2. We've done this before. So I go over to my formula, and I plug in the numbers. y sub 2 is 4 minus x, uh, y sub 1, sorry, is 2 over, and I go back over here, x sub 2 is 3, x sub 1 is 0. All right, uh, 4 minus 2, I get 2. 3 minus 0, I get 3. That is my slope. So I go over here, and I plug it in for m. So the equation of my line is 2 thirds x plus 2. All right, and there is the answer to that. Um, now, the next um, example comes right away before we have another checkpoint. Uh, let's 
go over to example three. Let's turn that stuff off and have uh, example three pop up here. Um, there's actually two examples in one here, so uh, double your money here. All right, so again, it's all about this formula. You figure out your slope, you figure out your y-intercept, you plug them in, you're done. All right, but let's see what they ask us to do. Write an equation of a line that is parallel to the line y equals 8x. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze this in here. Remember, y equals mx plus b. So in this case, the, right before the x is that 8. So in this case, the slope of the line that they give us is 8. Okay, and it also passes through this point. Okay, here's a, a couple steps we have to do. We want to come up with an equation of a line that has the, that is parallel to this one. Well, remember a couple days ago, we said if, a line, if lines are parallel, their slopes are the same. All right, so I can take this slope right here, and that is going to be the slope of my new line. All right, so I'm just going to plug that right in. Plug it right in for M. All right, here's the only other thing I have to figure out is B. All right, and here's how I do this. See how we've used this? Okay, here's the other piece of information they give us. Uh, oops, someone's calling Ben. Okay, go away, Skype. Um, all right, so here is another point that they uh, want this line, this new line, to go through. All right, well, take this point and plug it in there. All right, here is your X, and here is your y. If I'm coming up with an equation that's going to go through this point, that means this point is a solution to this new equation. So this point works in here. So I'm going to plug a 3 in for the y, and I'm going to plug a 0 in for the x, and lo and behold, look at I only have one variable left. So figure out what this variable is. Then we, go, we just go back to our algebra, and we do it. All right, 8 times 0, that gives me a zero and really that that zero can just go away so i've just figured out what b is that is my y-intercept so my new equation slope is going to be eight because it's parallel and my y-intercept is negative three so just plug it into y equals mx plus b all right plug it in eight there and plug in a positive three there there is your new equation. That is going to be parallel to this line, all right, and it's going to go through that point, all right. Now that's a lot to take in. This is I, you know, I told you guys before. This is traditionally ninth grade stuff, so you you might might want to rewind it. Oh gosh, how old am I? Rewind it, ha. Uh, take it back a little bit and uh, watch that one again. Okay, so I'm going to go right onto this one. All right, this is uh, actually it's part B of example four. So I'll write an equation of a line that is perpendicular. Okay, they're changing it on us. We're still going to use this. Okay, uh, but it's going to be perpendicular to this line. All right, now we got to go back a couple days. If the slope of this one is negative one half, a line that is perpendicular to this, uh, perpendicular. All right, I got to turn these things off. Some Facebook thing. All right. Uh, so perpendicular, that's what that says, is the negative reciprocal of that. So neg negative of a negative is positive. Reciprocal 1 over 2 is 2. So this is the new slope. Okay. This is the slope of the new line I'm looking for. All right. So, so far, here's what I have. Y equals MX plus B. I always start with that. I just figured out that the new slope is going to be 2. So I'm going to plug that in. All right. This is a lot of this is just about plugging in what they give you. All right. So I used this. Bam. I used that. They also wants me to go through this point. Well, just like I did up here, this is x, comma, y. Take this, plug it in over here. Okay. So the y is negative 5. And the x is a 0. That's convenient. All right, because look what's going to happen. 2 times 0 is 0. Those just go away. 
my new y-intercept is negative 5. Okay, thus, okay, I'm thinking y equals mx plus b. y equals, my new slope is 2, so plug it right in there. My new y-intercept is negative 5. Plug it in there. There you go. All right, so again, that's a, that's a lot to take in. That's a multi-step problem. Okay, this is this is a uh, big step up from uh, you know seventh grade math or what have you. So um, you know if you have to go back and look at it again, do it. All right, I'm going to throw up answers uh, for checkpoint two. Um, this actually has three different examples to it. So there's your your uh, examples of checkpoint two, three, and four. Hopefully you can do those on your own. Um, if you don't get these answers, then I've kind of for number three and number four, I kind of wrote them out what I would need to do. Okay, again, it's a multi-step process um, to do that. So if you don't get those, go back and figure it out or come in tomorrow with, with questions, all right? But um, so I'm going to go right on to the, the le next example here. And this is example four. Um, they have uh, the table on your packet shows the number of elementary teachers and secondary teachers in the U.S. for years 1992 to 1999. Um, I didn't put the table on here. I'm, I'm, I'm working on being able to import some things. I drew out the graph. Um, they already drew the line, but I want to show you what they did to get that line. So uh, here we go. Um, A, they want me to approximate the equation um, of the best fit data. Okay. So this is the same thing that we have done in the previous two examples. Oh, that's terrible. Take that out. Um, y equals mx plus b. If I'm going to make the equation that fits these points, I need to figure out my slope and I need to figure out my y-intercept. All right, well, to figure out slope, you go back to the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, now all you have to do is go to the table and pick two of the points that they already gave you. All right, now let, let's make uh, life uh, easy on ourselves. Actually, when you do best fit line, um, you want to take some points that are uh, far apart. You don't want to take the first two points. Okay, that's not the idea of a best fit line. So let's take the first point, which is 0, 282, and let's take the last point, which is 7, 330. Okay, just taking that right off the table. So this is going to be x1, y1, and this is going to be x2, y2. So now I just plug in the numbers. All right, uh, let's see, 330 minus 282. And I take uh, x minus x, so that's 7 minus 0. Okay. Now, I'll do some quick math in my head here. Let's see, that's 18 more plus 30. Okay, so we got uh, final result is going to be 48 over 7. Okay, so there is my slope. I need to figure out a slope and y-intercept, and I've got my equation. All right, so since that will not divide evenly, I'm just going to leave it like that. Big boys and girls, we can deal with fractions. Okay. And we've got to figure out slope, and we've got to figure out y-intercept. Okay, this is like first part, second part. Okay, now they actually give it to me in the in the table. Whenever you have a y-intercept, your x value is zero. So right there, that's your y-intercept. So the value of the y-intercept is 282. Okay, so that means my equation. All I'm doing is plugging it into here, plugging in what I know, y equals m, which is 48 over 7, 48 over 7, uh, times an x. And I just figured out my y-intercept, they told me, was positive 282. There is my equation for the points that they've graphed here. And this is this is real-time stuff. People, you know, out in the real world, you don't usually get an equation and say, okay, go graph it. You collect data. You guys know this from doing science fair. 
Um, if you go to any of the manufacturers or any financial institutions, they collect data and then they create a best fit line from it. Okay, and that and that is what we did right here. We just figured out the equation. All right, that's that's what we do in the real world, people. Okay, so part B, um, predict the numbers of student or of teachers in 2006. Okay, well what you have to do is come over here to your graph. Notice these don't line up real well. Okay, it's not that um, I hand drew the graph and they don't line up. It's this is intentional. This is real world data. You go out to the real world, things don't always line up nice. Okay. So what you do, and of course you guys use a ruler, what you do is you try to draw a best fit line, okay? I'm going to try to freehand it, but what you try to do is hit as many points as possible with a straight line, and you keep approximately the same number of points above the line and below the line. That's called a best fit line. So I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to try to go through, and I'm going to go right along there. I know that's not the best uh, straight line as possible. I'm, I'm working on that. But I hit a couple of the points, and I kept, uh, we got three of them up here, one of them down there. That's going to be my best fit line. And now I can use that, and again, this is what they do in the real world. All right, um, we want the number of teachers in 2006. Well, this is 1992, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. What I would do then is extend this graph out, okay? And I would add on, this is 8, this is 9, this is 10, all right? Uh, that would represent 2002. I would keep going until I get to 2006. I would keep this straight line going. I would go up from 2006 and over and have a value over here, okay, that would match up, all right? So I'm running out of room here to do that. So uh, maybe in class we'll do a little better uh, line there. But uh, that's basically it, okay? Uh, it's all about using that formula or that equation right there and figuring out your slope, figuring out your y-intercept with what's given. Now the problem that some of you guys are going to have is they're not always the same question, all right? Sometimes they're going to give you M and they're going to give you B and you just plug them in and you're done. All right. Sometimes they're going to give you uh, some points and you're going to have to figure out what M is and then you're going to have to figure out what B is. And that's where, where some people fall apart is it's not always the same question every single time. So uh, give these a shot. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.